What's up guys, Fahan here. Welcome back to another Ultimate Review. This is the review of the Zontes 350E. Huge thanks to Choco Agency for loading me this bike for the review. Alright guys, so before we begin the review, I uh, just want to highlight something very important, okay? So we noticed that 58.8% of our regular viewers are not subscribed to the channel. We've worked really, really hard on these videos. Day and night of planning, scripting, shooting, editing. So I humbly ask you guys to support us by subscribing to the channel. Why? Because this will actually help to trigger the YouTube algorithm to push out this channel and the videos to a wider audience so please help us guys Whew. okay so welcome back to the city of Medini here in Iskanda Putri and of course here I have with me is the Zontes 350E and I have been getting a lot of uh, requests to do a review on this bike um, surprisingly not much from our Singaporean viewers but actually our Malaysian viewers as well so doing my research on this bike um, apparently there's a small but loyal following here in malaysia on the zontes 350e and i'm really surprised to see on how popular the 350 is here in malaysia and if any malaysian owners who are in johor or even maybe singaporean owners also if they're keen to do a owner's review on this bike we welcome them on the show particularly Malaysian viewers we love to see a Malaysian point of view on this channel thanks to Chokong Agency we finally have one for review Ugh. so the weight of 190kg is very light for a maxi skirter of its class and I've noticed while riding it really helps with the maneuverability and handling so it has a 16 litre fuel tank which is quite huge with a projected range of over 400 kilometers wow certainly there is a lot of mileage of course this is a touring scooter okay so to get started make sure the transponder is near the bike or in your pocket or maybe inside this storage cubby right here press the red unlock button and you can see the tft gauge cluster lighting up break in press the starter Whew. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice, huh? And off we go. Right off the bat, you know, when I first got hopped onto this bike, I'm very surprised on actually how talky this bike is. Right off the line, the acceleration is quite sudden, huh? And it actually pushes me back to the back of my seat. Compared to other 20 scooters, which feels much more linear, there's this sudden jerk. <laughs> when I first got on it so performance wise is damn good uh, just to add on uh, this is his sports mode by the way uh, in eco mode the acceleration feels much more linear and feels more typically as what a scooter should be la. but when you get out of eco mode and into sports mode that's what you feel there's some slight difference la, on the acceleration and once again 190 kg you can feel the lightness of the bike especially when you are leaning into the corners negotiating a bend right you lean slightly only this bike leans much more so you gotta be careful when you are trying to adapt to the 350e for the first time the handling is really feather light eh? you can feel how light the bike is when you're negotiating these corners or taking that turn the ride is so comfortable that you don't feel that you're going at a very high speed like right now as you can see in the tft i'm going at 99 right now uh, but you don't feel it when you're cruising down this road even the suspension it really absorbs most of the minor bumps and road perfections and even the regulators just now when i went through it really absorbs most of the impact and the pickup is really awesome uh, like you want to keep up with the traffic or like for example a car is still getting you and you just want to get away and a twist of a throttle Whew. the 350e really accelerates huh? marketed as a maxi scooter for the european market 
The Zontes 350E seeks to compete with other Japanese and European offerings on the sub-400cc maxi-scooter market. Compared to its sister scooter, the 350D, the 350E prioritizes on long-distance touring with additional riding features, technology, and storage. Engine is a 349cc, liquid-cooled, single-cylinder, SOHC, with Bosch electronic fuel injection and an automatic CVT transmission. Okay guys, so before we get started with the static review, uh, there's a lot to talk about for the Zontes 350E. Yeah? And it actually has a sister, the Zontes 350D. I think in certain countries they're launched at the same time, especially here in Malaysia. And we've reviewed that previously, so do check the review out after watching this. Lah. And the 350E is much more of a tourer, while the 350D is more of a city commuter. Lah. So as you can see from its size, uh, its riding technology, its storage space is really equipped for touring and it has a longer wheelbase compared to the 350D at 219.5 cm putting it in the leagues of the Suzuki Birdman and the SYM Cruisim So as always, we're going to start off with the riding posture Okay, so sitting on his bike right now Whew. Very comfortable guys, very comfortable especially if you're riding long distance, okay You got this huge footboards over here where you can position your feet any way you want so that you don't get tired when you're riding that long distance trip and also we got this backrest over here my butt is really seated comfortably on it and I have to say the seat itself is very soft, it's very plush I don't have any butt aches or sores while riding this bike but however because riding a scooter typically as with this riding position you will tend to hunch your back, so do straighten your back from time to time and I have to say that my arms are comfortably on the handlebars right now I'm not struggling to reach them out or it's not too squeezy, it's just right for me I think shorter riders wouldn't have any issues with riding the Zontes 350E It's a very comfortable ride And at the right height of 77cm, I'm 165 and as you can see No issues for shorter riders I feel And also there's a lot of space between the cowling and my knee right now So taller riders, I would reckon they wouldn't hit the cowling when they're riding on the bike lah. Very comfortable lah, very comfortable. And also, it's very light at 190 kg. Yeah, despite its size, I'm really surprised on how light the bike is. Start stop situation, when you're standing on the traffic light, no struggles, no issues at all lah. Okay guys, so I'm next to come to the design of the bike and I have to say it's very Eurocentric, I would call it. <laughs> <laughs> Retains her overall traditional scooter appearance and silhouette with curvy and flowy lines, very minimal angular lines and sharp angles and they avoided the adventure look totally on the 350E Bodywork, paneling and the stickers are very much simple and plain The huge and white cowlings give off a nice total look to the bike And also provides uh, ample weather protection for the rider and pillion Pillion full packs are flushed with the bodywork I feel that its notable feature is its headlight and taillight design Very futuristic I'll call it But yet it doesn't look too weird or over the top Indicators are also flush within the headlight and taillight assembly Less cluttered without unnecessary signal stocks protruding from the flarings And because of that, I feel that the 350E stands out from the rest of the adventure-inspired scooters out there That you know is trying to emulate uh, what the Honda ADV series is doing And it's really something new, like, really something different you know, Maybe they are going back to this trend whereby a decade ago uh, There was a lot of curvy bikes and then they went to the angular and squarish kind of designs and maybe slowly manufacturers are going back to the curvy and sleek designs I reckon So I'm next to come to the handlebar, handlebar controls, the gauge cluster I have to say the handlebar design itself is very scooterish Typical triangle kind of thing going on over here But this one is not a plastic cladding, this is actually forged aluminium I must say it's very nice, very beautiful And it's like a skeleton kind of thing Like for example, if you remove, if supposedly there's a plastic cladding covering this thing It exposes what is here And also there's a cover over here For you to actually mount a phone mount in the middle uh, But I'm having problems removing it For some reason there's a hook here Because the guys working there, they've added it in to 
put their kopi while riding lah. <laughs> and also by default, the 350E includes heated grips and also handle guards. So it's not an accessory, but off the showroom, this is what you'll get. Okay, so up next is the handlebar control. So handlebar controls, if you've ridden a Zontes bike before, it's basically the same. It's all in the Zontes parts bin and obviously they did this to save money, but at the same time, give a lot of features on all of their bikes and maintain the standards. Handlebar controls their back lid, which I'm gonna explain in a bit. To the left over here, okay, so we got the high beam, low beam, flashing at the front over there, hazard, signal indicators, horn, and just to the right of that, we got the electronic windshield control, two adjustments only, up and down. Unfortunately, there's an IU unit over here, so if I were to press it, the windshield going down is going to hit onto the IU. Lah. The dealer did this because they don't want the handlebar to be cluttered, and of course, they're waiting for the new OBU to come out and they're gonna put it on the brake fluid reservoir. Just to the right of that, there's a set and mode button to toggle the gauge cluster, which I'm gonna come to in a bit. And below that is the camera button, which I'm gonna come to in a bit. I must say, it really blends well with the design and provides a symmetrical look to the heated grip controls. Okay, so speaking of heated grip controls, to the right over here, kill switch, mode button, eco and sport, starter, and we got the night mode. Okay guys, so let's test out the lights. Currently, the engine is turned off. Okay, so when I turn on the engine, the daytime running lights turn on. Okay, so this is still with the night mode off. Turning on the night mode now. Woo. And this is the high beam. Wow, and look at that. You can see that the signboard in front of me it's reflected back and yeah that's Malaysia roads for you lah <laughs> take note that with the night mode turned on you can see the backlight on the switches over here and just the right of that we got the lock and unlock button so to turn on the bike just press this red button and the TFT will come to life lah and the fuel and seat in which you can actually open them when the key is actually in range so to turn on the bike just press the red unlock button make sure your key is in range first and you can see the tft gauge cluster just lighting up 70 inch display very clear and you can see it bright in the daylight eh? so as usual we got the typical zontes kind of arrangement over here i think this is simple interface to the top left over here we got the warning lights clock, the maintenance schedule, the fuel range, battery voltage, the TPMS also displayed here. If you were to press the mode button, menu number two, the trip meter, average fuel consumption, and the average liters per kilometer. And just below that, we got the mode button, which is currently in sport mode right now, and the little key, which is to show that the key is in range or something. Lah. I'm not really 100% sure. Yeah, but it's there. And to right of that, we got the speedometer, and below that is the orbiter. Surrounding both of it is the tachometer, and another ring just behind it, the fuel indicator, and the temperature gauge. Okay, so to go inside the menu, you press set. The first thing you'll see is the interface. So you can adjust accordingly to street, race, and casual. Okay, so to toggle accordingly, you press mode. First comes the connection, display, which is you can toggle between dark mode, bright mode or automatic depending on how bright it is the tft display brightness bluetooth connectivity there's a zontes app that you can actually connect this but i'm not going to go into detail on that and for the auxiliary menu it shows the tcs the traction control system which can be toggled on and off clock unit you can adjust between kilometers per hour or miles per hour language english or Chinese other information in which I'm not really going to go into detail on that as well and exit to select you press set and we're back to the gauge cluster <laughs> oh my gosh there's a lot of things to speak about this bike and I also love the mirrors forged aluminium once again being a keyless machine the 350E doesn't rely on keys to lock its handlebar. Instead, once the bike is turned off, simply turn the handlebar all the way to the left to lock it. To release, simply press the red unlock button. Additionally, unique to Eurospec scooters such as this. When activated, the indicators make a clicking sound similar to automobiles. Take a listen.
Okay, so up next, we come to storage. And of course, as with any other automatic scooter, you expect storage on the bike. And uh, officially, according to the official specs, Zontes did not mention how many liters the unseated storage is. But according to some reviewers, they say it's 50 liters, more than enough for you to fit two helmets. And I actually did try this out, and it actually can fit two helmets. And interesting to note, you don't need the bike to be turned on to actually open up the unseat storage. As long as the key is within range of the bike, just press the seat button and you can access the unseat storage. And I must say, it's very huge. Comes with this divider to put like you know, small stuff, ensure that it, does, it doesn't move around. And you can remove this actually. And there's lining. My presumption that this lining is also included with the bike. And this hump over here is actually to accommodate the engine. Lah. But overall, if you ask me, it's very huge, it's very large. To mention, lah, even the bike is turned off like this. Uh, you can also access the fuel cap while the key is in range of the bike. Lah. And on top of that, below the gauge cluster over here, there's also more storage, which is uh, you know, to put like your transponder, uh, your key, cards, touch and go, Nets flash pay, wow, <laughs> and any other tickets or pieces of paper or something that you need. Lah. I don't think it's enough to fit a passport in here, but like tiny, tiny little items within reach that you need quickly, you can put it in here. Lah. And take note, lah, even the bike is turned off, it's not lockable, so don't put any valuables inside here. For the storage cubby, don't put any variables in the right one because this doesn't lock when the bike is turned off. For the left one, you need to turn on the bike to actually open this. Lah. So just to give a visual idea on how big the storage cubby on the cowling is. I've actually stuffed them with Liquid Moly products. And this is just the left one. If you're the kind of rider who loves to store stuff in your motorbike, this storage cubby is really going to be a treat for you. Lah. Because there's a lot of things you can store. As you can see, all the Liquid Moly products here fit inside. I think if it wasn't for the cylindrical shape, I think it can fit even more. And not to forget that, there's also USB charging on the left storage cubby over here. The two USB ports, USB-A, USB-C. Both are fast charging and additionally, at this small storage underneath the gauge cluster, there's also a USB-A charging port and it's fast charging as well. And of course, as with any other scooter, you can expect all of the necessary riding technology and conveniences that comes with it. And as usual, Zontes will always take this up a notch. And just to name a few, keyless transponder, full LED lighting all around, but I feel that the Zontes 350E takes this one step further with its daytime running lights and tail lights. Having a flowing animation as you turn the bike on and also the indicators, they are flushed into design and if you look in the rear, this flowing animation continues on to the rear indicators as well. We got two riding modes, Eco and Sports. We got a full color 7 inch TFT display, electronically adjustable windshield. We got dual channel ABS pad with four piston calipers from Jejuan. For suspension, we got a standard telescopic fox in the front and dual shocks in the rear. It's not Showa, unfortunately. I think it's Zontes in-house brand or from their own parts bin. Built-in tire pressure monitoring system, USB charging port, and they have a lot of it, I must say. And not only that, they're also fast charging and also traction control system, which can be toggled on and off. Whew. <laughs> so we come to the add-ons which comes with this bike as well. I think this is some sort of an accessory package that Zontes is selling to make uh, some extra cash on the side. Uh, some of the accessories include a camera which is actually a $500 add-on. There's already wires running through the internals of the bike. It's just a matter of you putting the extra cash to add in a dash cam. And I have to say that uh, the design really integrates well, especially the buttons on the handlebar control that I've previously mentioned. And and the rear also is flushed together with the bike. It integrates well the design basically. And not only that, um, there's also JBL speakers. I'm not sure this is sold by JBL or Zontes, but the design I must say really goes well with the cockpit of the bike. Lah. And I must say it's a pretty interesting add-on. <laughs> okay guys, so horn check for the Zontes 350E. 
<laughs> okay guys, so I'm next to come to the colors and the one that we're reviewing right now, this is called white color. In China, or in certain markets, they refer to this color as uh, pearl white. Uh, there's also a black color. So they did not come out with a lot of colorful colors for the 350E. I wish they did. Uh, maybe future offerings, they may offer it in more colors other than black and white. Lah. Maybe gray. <laughs> okay, so up next, we come to the price. Okay, so from Chokong Agency, machine price is 13500 I don't think it gets any cheaper than this. Um, especially for a class 2A scooter, you know, comparing with the X-Max, Forza, ADV350, even I would say uh, S5M and Kinko uh, is a bargain. It's really a bargain. And on top of that, you're getting 3 year or 100,000 engine warranty and 2 years on the electrical. It's a good deal, it's a good deal. And the after sales support, once again, I, have, I always reiterate this. Uh, their customer service, their after sales support is damn good. For our Malaysian friends, the machine price for the Zontes 350E is 25,800. And I'm getting this nice commanding view of the road right now. It's just taller than a standard motorbike. And also I'm seated comfortably behind that I can see all of the riding controls, the handlebar, the TFT display right in front of me. So it has this touring feel when I'm riding the 350E. Windshield is also quite high, deflects the wind pretty well. Whew. Brakes are very good, comes with dual channel ABS, uh, J1 big calipers, stops on a dime. Uh, city riding, no issue I feel. Start stop traffic and all that. But I feel that the 350E is much better suited for the highways, long stretches of road. Uh, start stop traffic, it does get a bit tiring. Lah. So let's see. Negotiated negotiates corners pretty well. Okay. So as you can see, I'm leaning as low as I could, you know. Here in the motor box in Medini. Comes with traction control also. So really, this riding aids really helps with the safety aspect. I just feel confident. Taking in the corners, lean, really leaning into it. Handling is uh, pretty tip top. Uh. And once again, it takes a while, you know, if you've been riding on the bike, especially a heavier one, that you really need to get in there and lean. It takes a while, it takes a bit of adjustment. You don't really need to make any effort to really lean into the corner with the 350E. You lean slightly, the bike will really lean together with you. It doesn't really handle like a scooter. It handles like a motorcycle, I feel. The engine noise I feel is kind of loud for a scooter but it doesn't really bother me too much and it has a nice deep throaty exhaust If you are into this kind of deep exhaust note, you really appreciate it Engine braking is not that effective on it So you really need to pair up with the brakes when you want to slow down considerably lah. Even when I'm standing on the bike like this at a stoplight Despite its huge size and long wheelbase it doesn't feel heavy at all. Feels as if I'm riding a class 2B scooter. I don't know what Zontes did to facilitate with the weight savings. I'm guessing they use lighter materials. But at the same time, they did not compromise on... I mean, usually this light or weight saving parts, they are much more expensive. But they are able to get the price down with the 350E. Not to forget, there's a lot of riding technology that's already integrated with this bike. So when you turn on the indicator, uh, the indicator sounds pops up almost like a car like that. As you can hear, not, not sure if you guys can hear, but yeah. <laughs> so, of course, uh, Zontes made the 350E with European specs in mind. So they have included the noisy indicator for European riders, uh, usually uh, they are car drivers that made the switch to a scooter and they want to facilitate that. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Look at that, right off the line. It pushes me back slightly and it just accelerates. Oh man. <laughs> and the suspension is really good. Huh? 
the suspension really bouncing back so we're in the highway now and the CFT is displaying 110 right now but I don't feel as if I'm going that fast it's very smooth and stable that's why I say the 350E really belongs on the highway as opposed to city streets okay so we got a bunch of regulators right ahead oh man the, in, the suspension really absorbs most of the impact I would say the 350E in terms of performance uh, is damn good and I've been riding around a lot yesterday uh, and I still got like 139 kilometers worth of range left <laughs> which is pretty damn good but the fuel gauge says left 2 bar lah. okay so let's go oh man 129, 130, 136. Woo, okay, so I think the cutoff is 146, 145. I'm not able to go beyond 146. It just keeps stalling at uh, 146, 145. So that is the maximum speed. Uh, definitely you can feel as if the bike can go faster than that, but I think electronically. It has been limited to 146 lah. Okay, so I can feel the bike at this speed, right? I can feel the bike just swinging left and right. But I don't think it's meant to go at such a high speed. Its comfortable cruising speed is probably 130, 135. Anything above 140, it already starts to shake a little. But still okay. It's not that bad that you feel as if you're gonna tank slap or anything. And the high windshield, of course, it gets the job done, deflects the wind pretty well. And look at that, the fuel level still remains at 139. <laughs> so despite sharing the same engine as the 350D, which is much more of an urban scooter, it has different tuning. Like. So Zontes advertised the higher compression rate on the 350E, which is why it is so talky lah and they are able to do it without draining the fuel consumption okay guys so i've had like five days with the zontes 350e and i think i've already said uh what i need to say in the vlog lah is to me it's basically a huge upgrade over the 350D which I feel that is much more of an urban scooter this is really more of a touring variation great performance and acceleration very smooth engine and riding experience premium riding tech and features all available and at 13,500 machine price it's probably the best value for money class 2A scooter out there lah right now I feel so I feel that as with Zontes um, they're in similar leagues as with SIM Kinko very obscure not really known to many riders and they may still be skeptical lah, so they may stick to the usual offerings from Japanese manufacturers lah. shortcomings I feel as a Touring scooter, okay, uh, there should be cruise control lah. or maybe a throttle lock included but I mean for the price that you're going to pay for it, I think it's not really that necessary and after all, you can put aftermarket throttle lock or cruise control if you want to lah. Definitely a scooter for everyone. If you're considering an X-Max or Forza, you should really have a look at the 350E and maybe even consider it as well. Um, better specs, better features. Uh, to me, it's somewhat like an ADV 350, only better. And if you're keen to try it for yourself before buying, you can consult the guys at Chokong Agency and even test ride the bike at their showroom in Kaki Bukit. And I uh, will see you guys in the next one.